Hello, YouTube watchers. Welcome back. Today, I want to address something that triggered me. So if you don't want to be offended, this may not be the video for you, especially if you favor the term homewrecker to describe women. And if you're going to comment in agreement or disagreement, I suggest you at least listen to the end and not judge this rant based on the first 30 seconds because you'll be missing the point. Also, for those of you who like to use profanity in your comments, they do get filtered out by the algorithm. So half the time, I don't see them. And sometimes they're good comments. So keep it clean because I do like to read your comments and I do like getting different viewpoints. So this is, I guess, a prologue to my upcoming Nicole tapes series, I guess you could call it. I saw several references to the mistress calling her a home wrecker. And make no mistake, she's a liar. She's immoral. And she's a side piece. And as I alluded to in my last video, she has no right to preach the importance of family. The decision she made to pursue Chris or allow herself to be pursued by him which resulted in their affair, was 100% her decision. And she must take the blame for her actions. But why must she take so much of the blame for his actions? In other words, if she's a homewrecker, then what is he? Besides a murderer, of course. And if the genders were reversed, what is the man who cheats with a married woman. We rarely, if ever, hear the term homewrecker applied to a man. At least I haven't. The wife in this same scenario gets slut-shamed. And usually I like to add for those who have different gender identity or are non-binary, substitute the gender or pronoun of your choice. But this is specifically an issue about double standards and the demonization of women and how they, we, are perceived differently in the same scenario. And ironically, it's often women who are the most savage in their criticism of other women. And again, to be clear, because people will say, you're defending Nicole, I'm most definitely not. What's to follow is more so a general commentary on this type of situation. And it's not my opinion of side piece with respect to her involvement in the murders that will be discussed in an upcoming video. This is a, I guess, a feminine rant, if you will, using aspects of the Watts case and cases like it. And I hope this rant is not directed to the majority of people. Maybe I'm just focusing on being triggered by the comments of a few outliers or I'm finding myself in very biased Reddit pages that discuss the case I've been following. Anyhow, it seems in cases where a husband cheats, his culpability is often downplayed much more so than when a wife cheats. So case in point, how many comments and posts have we seen by people, and those who go by the last name Twats, who blame Shanann for her husband's decision to cheat? And in some cases, she's blamed for causing her own murder by her husband. She drove him to it, not to mention the two innocent children. And I said the husband's decision. People will say side piece lured him, coerced him, she stole him, or uh, as Chris says in his second confession, she put a leash on him and tugged him away like he was some unwilling participant. And again, how many times do we hear when talking about a married woman that the other man stole their wife away? I've never. Why is the woman always cast as the thief who stole the man? And the point of this sermon, if you will, again, is to point out the differences in how those who cheat are perceived, men versus women. It's not necessarily even a condemnation of cheating in general. 
It's about how it's perceived based on the sex of the person doing it. The married person, man or woman, is the one with the moral duty, the legal obligation. They've made a commitment to another person. The husband or wife is solely accountable for their decision to pursue another relationship before seeking to separate or divorce. An indiscretion between two consenting adults where they both know the deal and intentions of the other party and it's not harming anyone, then I'm certainly no one to judge. And I've seen so many times in some cases the spouse is fully aware of their partner's infidelity and they either don't care because, you know, they're they're living a sweet life or what have you, or, you know, they're off doing their own thing, or they choose to stick their heads in the sand. But when it goes beyond that and quote unquote wrecks the family, I would say, and I'll use the husband as the example because I'm referring to the Watts affair kind of loosely, it's very possible both the wife and the other woman have been led astray. Why? Well, look at the common denominator, the husband. What is he telling these two women? And going back to Twats, he's telling both women how much he loves them. He's telling his wife he wants to work on things and apologizes for being distant. And he tells his side piece that They'll have many firsts together and that he's in the midst of a separation and pending divorce. And don't come after me because twats could be substituted for a woman as the common denominator. But again, it's about how the cheating man is viewed as opposed to how the cheating woman is viewed, regardless of which side of the triangle they're on. And. I have to, you know, speaking for myself, women are awesome creatures, but we're not responsible for the actions of men. That is a great deal of responsibility to put on us, considering men still hold the majority of positions of power and control. And if women are powerful enough to get men to bend to our will and kill for us, why don't we rule the world? <laughs> Although. Some may argue, and I'm probably getting this quote wrong, behind every great man is a great woman, and I'll add lib this next part on my own, who helped to make them who they are, whether figuratively as in their support, supporting wife or quite literally as their mother who gave birth to them. I say this with tongue in cheek, and this is in no way to say that men are bad or lesser than. There will always be things that men can do better than women and vice versa. It's just the way we're built. We need each other. But when both people participate in an action, as in cheating, well, don't paint the woman as the homewrecker. It diminishes the man's role and demonizes women in a way that men just aren't demonized in the same situation. And it, it really hurts women. But I hope that gives you pause as to why women continue to feel they're being treated differently and unfairly in many aspects of our lives. Of course, every woman has a different experience and story to tell, but we've all dealt with double standards or unfair treatment based on our sex, whether we realize it or not, and we shouldn't. I could veer off onto so many other topics related to feminism, masculine toxicity, and gender roles and identity, but never mind that being for another video. That's probably for a whole other channel. And while I hold these views, I am a Gen Xer, and I do hold on to certain gender roles based on the era I was raised in, which some of you may find hypocritical or in contradiction to some of what I'm venting about. And I'm not saying my thought process on this is perfect. But anyhow, to close out this thought or rant, 
Side piece is 100% responsible for her role in the demise of Chris's marriage, which unfortunately ended in a triple or quadruple murder, however you see it. Um, But Chris is 100% responsible for his part, and it should in no way be minimized by the involvement of a side piece or by how people perceived his wife, calling her controlling and demanding. The only ones blameless in this are Shanann and the children. In just the same way Side Piece didn't put a leash on Watts and tug him away, Shanann didn't make him cheat, and she didn't make him kill her. It was his decision. So, having said all that, Let's circle back to Nicole. There were several interviews of Nicole and a written account of her interactions with Twat. So this might be a four-part series because I don't want to make these videos too long. But after each one, I after each one of these interviews, I should say, I have expected the investigators to say, nothing that you said today makes any sense which is exactly what Graham Coder said to Chris Watts in that uh, first interrogation. She can't seem to keep her lies straight, and she contradicts herself constantly. And a lot of what she says really doesn't make any sense. But she doesn't really get any pushback by investigators, which I found kind of weird. So stay tuned, and we'll dive into her first interview on August 15th in the park with her father and her dog, Duke. And I'll try and get that up on Tuesday night. So again, thanks for watching. And I look forward to your hopefully thoughtful and respectful comments.